when the cycle started and now is that we are in a market that has now proven out the model of extended deposit payments. When we started, we were very unsure of what the future would bring to Miami. Coming out of a world economic crisis, we knew that Miami had continued to grow. We knew that we had to start building again because otherwise we were going to have a housing shortage. The occupancy studies were showing 97, 98% occupancy and the city continued to grow at a very rapid pace. And because of the lag between when you start to build and when you can actually deliver a building, we were already running behind the eight ball. This having been said, we also knew that the traditional models that had been used in the past for pre-construction and development were no longer applicable. Banks were not going to come in and fund and underwrite these big construction projects. So we went with a new model of extended deposits where buyers were asked to provide up to 50 and sometimes 70 percent of the purchase price up front throughout the process of building the building. When we went to market with this, we weren't sure how our buyers um, from around the world were going to respond. Four years later, what we know is that they've embraced the process amply, that they have understood that this is not only good for the builders because it gives them more security about the quality of their buyers and their commitment to buying, but also good for the buyers who know that not only are they in a position to close, but so are their neighbors. So in fact, when these buildings are completed, it's a group effort. Everyone is truly vested in the building and everyone comes to the table with a great sense of security that a great product will be delivered and that the buyers will show up at the closing table. Banks may or may not step back in, but regardless of what the banks do, the consumer and the developer is no longer at the mercy of a potential financing option. It may be an option, it may not be an option, but the building is going to be delivered and the consumer is prepared to close regardless. So we are more in control of our own destiny. Four years later, this model has been tested and proven. And in fact, every building that's being built in Miami right now is being built with this model, which gives us all tremendous comfort. And it has been proven a fact that as these units have come to closing, the buyers have turned up to close and the closings have been very painless. A lot of conversation about changing the deposit structure and in fact from where we started that was a 70% deposit very quickly the deposit structure fell back to 50% why because with a 50% structure there was enough um, equity in the transaction and the deal and the development to allow it to move forward now there's conversation and in fact some jobs have dropped down their deposit requirements to 30 or 35% this is coming towards the end of a sellout where a building is well under construction and where all the funding is in place to complete the building. So it's happening for two reasons. One is because developers are anxious to finish the sales. It's also happening because uh, from a conscientious standpoint, we feel a need to allow the locals to jump back into the market. Since the banks have in fact stepped back in and are once again lending to qualified buyers, the 30 to 35 percent structure allows a lot of the locals that have been sitting on the sideline who were not in a position to put down 50, 60, or 70 percent down payments and then wait two and three years for a building to be finished to come in towards the end of a sellout where a building is within a year, perhaps six months of being finished, and in fact buy their unit in a more conventional stock. We should start with what's being delivered because it all starts with where people are going to live. So you start there what units are being delivered, what exists, what's being delivered, and what's the demand for occupancy. At the end of the day, what we all want is a vibrant city, and we all want these wonderful buildings that are being built to be called home by someone. So that's the most important number. The second most important number is what's in the pipeline, what is going to be delivered next. So these are buildings that in fact have been committed to by buyers, with real deposits that are non-refundable, so they're vested in the construction and they're underway. You know those buildings are gonna get built, they've been funded, they're on their way, and it's important to look at when those units are gonna be delivered. We know that the development process is not an easy one. From conception to delivery uh, can oftentimes take 10 years, depending on the size of the project, because they are very complicated. Generally speaking, a project, once the site is identified, will take a minimum of three to three and a half years to turn into someone's home. 
So we have to look at that and make sure that there's enough construction going on so that the demand to live in an urban center is being fulfilled. And in Miami, we're on track to do that, where we were very much behind the eight ball when we started the construction, and therefore we've had tremendous upward pressure on our rents that have continued to rise. And not only that, but if you went to look for a place, you better show up with your checkbook or it wasn't gonna be there by the time you got back. So there needs to be a healthy balance between supply and demand. And last but not least, there are the projects that are being talked about, the projects that are being dreamt about, the projects that are in the planning stages. It's important to have those projects out there and to be thinking about them because those will become a reality someday. And that's the concept that keeps the city growing and emerging. We can't count those as inventory until they're well into the ground. Once a project breaks ground, that's where I would look at it and count it as real inventory that's going to be delivered. The thing that makes us most comfortable in this cycle is the way that product is being built. If it's not funded, if it's not sold, it's not going to be built. And we feel that that's a very good safety net for all parties involved. So while we look very closely at the product that's being delivered, how it's being absorbed, etc., cetera, uh, at this point, we're comfortable that the system that's in place is a good checks and balances to keep the flow of inventory healthy.